I'm gonna just be honest, this was the greatest interview of all time. This is Donovan Copley from Hot Water. I am Carrie Miller. Hey, I'm Russell Prime Circle. Love, love, love. RTL. My new addiction. Let me not, let me, let me not just talk about it. I'll let me show you in the back of the window where I'm at. Cabinet has decided to place the entire country on alert level two. No, thank you for getting me out of bed this morning. Informative, relevant, diverse, interactive, so educational, fantastic, super fulfilling. I think most of the time in South Africa, certainly provincial cricket, they might as well play because there's no spectators going to watch anyone. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> They're hugging, shaking of hands, and kissing is a thing of the past. And then overnight into Thursday, we're expecting that cold front to spread a showers into most the playlist. Incredible. Love the music. This music is entertaining. So entertaining. Entertaining and entertaining. They wanted radio people because radio people can basically talk shit when things go wrong. A sight that just a few weeks ago seemed scarcely possible. Eden Park is back in business. A capacity... Mind. No, but seriously, on a serious note, I think I actually swiped right from the one day when I saw you. I didn't know. You didn't. But you wouldn't know. Oh, dear. Oh, yes. And I love dress. If I tell you, I didn't wear a bra. That was so good. <laughs> Splashdown. As you can see on your screen, we have visual confirmation for Splashdown. I will try to fix you. You guys are the lifeblood of what's left of this music industry. And of course, Noel Johnson. We love your sexy legs. Especially because of Noel Johnson. Jeez, that man is sexy. Thank God for RTLSA. You are a star. RTLSA. Home of legends. 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 Combine Investments, an impact venture capital company that turns entrepreneurs' dreams into reality. A core focus is to invest in high growth opportunities to maximize returns for shareholders, at the same time also providing a comprehensive service offering to cover all business needs. From small startups to larger companies, Kaban offers the entire spectrum of service offerings required to get business moving. Visit www.kaban.co.za for more information. Kaban Investments, turning entrepreneurs' dreams into reality. This is your top three on RTLSA. Brought to you by Creative Design and Print. For all your specialized printing requirements, contact Lauren on 072-114-0329 or lauren.creativedesign at gmail.com. Own your piece of RTL by sponsoring a feature. Learning Top Badger Friday in other news. Power Play Trivia. You will be helping keep RTL on air and building infrastructure for as little as 300 Rand per week. Have your or your company's name associated with the fastest growing online radio station in the world. Well, well, well. The RTL SA Top 10. Your Top 3. three, three. Contact RTL for more info on WhatsApp 064. 134-0020 or email info at noeljohnson.co.za It's time to mass debate on RTL they say RTL Playlist is incredible Love the music This music is entertaining So entertaining Entertaining RTL RTL <laughs> You're listening to RTLSA. You're listening to RTLSA.
Monday, the 20th of September, 2021. Coming in hot today. <laughs> it is a new week. It is, in fact, uh, let me have a look at my calendar. It is the 38th week of the year. Yes, 38 weeks down out of 52, which means that we have got about 14 weeks left before the end of the year, before we move into 2022. How scary is that? It is seriously scary. I was talking to a teacher this weekend, and... Um, they well a couple of teachers some schools are breaking up this week and other schools are breaking up in a week's time again and then there's only about nine or ten weeks of the fourth term left before the end of the year is done and dusted chaos i tell you this time is flying so fast today we have a look at the emmys the emmys happened this weekend all the television awards there's globes that were handed out uh, we have a little uh, look back at what happened this weekend. Some of the big winners, some of the big losers, and a lot of fun all in all. It's going to be absolutely entertaining to see the fashion, for one. I mean, just the way people dress is absolutely hilarious. <laughs> so we'll have a look at that a little later in the show as well. Right now, it's time for your headlines and some weather. Brought to you by the SABC. In our headlines, the Constitutional Court is due to deliver judgment this morning on whether or not the Independent Electoral Commission can reopen the candidate registration process for the upcoming local government elections. Now, the IEC announced earlier this month that it would reopen the process following the Concord's refusal to allow the IEC to postpone the elections until February. However, the Democratic Alliance challenged the decision to reopen registration, saying that the Concord's ruling on the elections did not include permission to reopen it. 2,281 new cases of COVID-19 have been reported in South Africa. The National Institute for Communicable Diseases has also reported another 58 deaths, taking the total fatalities in the country to 86,174. Now, the top prizes at television's Emmy Awards have gone to the drama The Crown and the comedy Ted Lesso. Now, the best drama series win for The Crown gave Netflix its biggest prize so far, while Apple TV entered streaming's big leagues with the best comedy series win for Ted Lasso. Quick look at uh, what to expect weather-wise for today. We do have clear skies over much of the northern Cape, but becoming partly cloudy over the southern and through the central regions of the country. And that's where we're seeing isolated to scatter showers and thunder showers in places over the southeastern as well as the central regions. That is uh, the free state in the extreme southern parts of Gauteng. Now a cold front uh, over the southwestern parts, rather over the western Cape, bringing with it some isolated showers and rain in places over the southern parts of the Western Cape as well as the southwestern parts along that southwestern coastline and the adjacent interior slightly better chance of those showers and rain sitting at about 60 uh, percent uh, for today now taking a look at our daytime temperatures uh, temperatures have improved uh, quite nicely today uh, warm to hot uh, over the northeastern parts of the country still cool however along the coastal regions we are only reaching a maximum of 18 uh, East London seeing a maximum of 19 today a cold day in Georgia and Cape Town and that is with showers and rain a maximum of 17 there Crawford and Craddock 22 both at waist will peak at 20 today and those warm conditions over the central regions Bloemfontein seeing 26 uh, this afternoon Freiburg peaking at 30 and very hot conditions uh, today in Le Palale with 34 now uh, Tuesday uh, seeing clear skies over the central and western parts where it will be cool to warm but cold in places over the interior of Guazul Natal there is a band of isolated showers and thunder showers expected light precipitation more drizzle really uh, over Limpopo and Mpumalanga that's your weather. Time now to take a short break. Right, coming up in Monday Madness today, we decided last week after showing the highlights package of that uh, interview with Eddie Kramer that we'll actually run the full interview in Monday Madness this week. So we'll do that in the second hour of the show the entire interview from beginning to end. And it was really, really good. Because I mean, what we just focused on was the Woodstock side of things. In this interview, we get into his personal 
um, life a little bit more and what he's done and who he's worked with and and what his thoughts are on COVID and stuff like that. So very interesting interview with a very interesting guy and I'll play that for you in the second hour of the show. Brand new feature starting today, somewhere around the turn of the hour, 30 seconds that you will never get back with Bob the Legend. <laughs> okay, I know it sounds very interesting. Indeed, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to play that for you it's just a little later in the show. 30 seconds that you will never get back with Bob the Legend. Listen to this. And now, 30 seconds that you will never get back with Bob the Legend on RTLSA. Yes, that's coming up a little later in the show. Your top three is Fred's selection today. That brought to you by Creative Design and Print. Power Play Trivia brought to you by Bev Miller. I will uh, play that for you. Well, I'll give that to you in a little bit. We've also got Today in History. And your burning topic today brought to you by Cheryl and Kirsten Morgan. To be or not to be? That is the question. What are your favorite Shakespeare plays or moments that you can mention? Now, you can also talk about the movie ad adaptations to his plays as well. So whatever tickles your fancy, what is your favorite thing about Shakespeare? A line, uh, uh, a play, whatever it is that really tickles your fancy when it comes to Shakespeare. Play, uh, send me a voice note on 064-134-0020 and tell me what that is. Days of the year today. Today is punch day. And let's not go and punch someone. <laughs> not the idea. No. Punch. Actual punch that you consume. The liquid beverage that you consume. So uh, you can uh, make yourself a punch. It doesn't have to be alcoholic. Although the alcoholic ones are always the funner ones. But anyway... It's punch day. It's also pepperoni pizza day. Now, that is something that I can certainly wrap my mind around a little later this afternoon. I think that's a great idea. Most importantly, though, it is the International Day of Peace. So find yourself some peace. Grab yourself a pepperoni pizza with a little bit of punch on the side, and you'll be celebrating this day in style. Combine Investments, an impact venture capital company that turns entrepreneurs' dreams into reality. A core focus is to invest in high growth opportunities to maximize returns for shareholders, at the same time also providing a comprehensive service offering to cover all business needs. From small startups to larger companies, Kaban offers the entire spectrum of service offerings required to get business moving. Visit www.kaban.co.za for more information. Kaban Investments, turning entrepreneurs' dreams into reality. You're listening to RTLSA. I want to be on lockdown with Noel Johnson. You are listening to. You listening to. You're listening to. You're listening to Noel Johnson. Noel Johnson. Noel Johnson. And you're listening to Noel Johnson. And you're gonna party it up listening to Noel Johnson. As I was saying, you're listening to my mate, Noel Johnson. RTLSA is proudly brought to you by Caban Investments, an impact venture capital company that turns entrepreneurs' dreams into reality. Visit www.kabancapital.co for more information. No matter what they tell us, no matter what they teach us, we can't deny what we believe. RTLSA. It's class with our own way on RTLSA. Um, yeah, I haven't played that song for a while. I think the last time I played that was like one of the nighttime shows during um, heavy lockdown. Very cool song, absolutely love it. And if I remember correctly, I think it was Jess that requested it that night and we played it quite a bit subsequent to that. Anyway, time to get into your power play trivia now, brought to you by Bev Miller. Time to test your knowledge with power play trivia. 
Right, today's power play trivia question is sort of tied in with the um, burning topic. And it was actually the trivia question that gave me the idea for the burning topic. So uh, the, the, the power play trivia question today is, which of Shakespeare's plays were the longest? Which of Shakespeare's plays were the longest? Hmm. Do you know that answer? <laughs> Over 4,000 lines in the play. It was the longest by a long shot. Send your answer to me via WhatsApp on 064-134-0020 and I will let you know if you are a, a Shakespeare connoisseur, so to say. And also just the burning topic, just remember, send me a voice note with your favorite Shakespeare moments. I'd love to hear what they are. I'm going to just be honest, this was the greatest interview of all time. This is Donovan Copley from Hot Water. I am Carrie Miller. Hey, I'm Ross from Prime Circle. Love, love, love. RTL. On your addiction. Let me, not, let, me, let me not just talk about it. I'll, let me show you in the back of the window where I'm at. Cabinet has decided to place the entire country on alert level two. No, thank you for getting me out of bed this morning. Informative. Relevant. Diverse. Interactive. So educational. Fantastic. Super fulfilling. I think most of the time in South Africa, certainly provincial cricket, they might as well play because there's no spectators going to watch anyone. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> the hugging, shaking of hands and kissing is a thing of the past. And then overnight into Thursday, we're expecting that cold front to spread showers into most... The playlist is incredible. Love the music. Best music. Entertaining. So entertaining. Entertaining. And entertaining. They wanted radio people because radio people can basically talk shit when things go wrong. A sight that just a few weeks ago seemed scarcely possible. Eden Park is back in business. A capacity... No, but seriously, on a serious note, I think I actually swiped right from the one day when I saw you. I didn't know. Well, you didn't. But you wouldn't know. No. Oh, dear. And I love dress. If I tell you, I didn't wear a bra. That was so good. <laughs> Splashdown. As you can see on your screen, we have visual confirmation for Splashdown. I will try to fix you. You guys are the lifeblood of what's left of this music industry. And of course, Noel Johnson. We love your sexy legs. Especially because of Noel Johnson. Jeez, that man is sexy. Thank God for RTLSA. You are a star. RTLSA. Home of legends. 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 Own your piece of RTL by sponsoring a feature. Learning Top Badger Friday in other news. Power Play Trivia. You will be helping keep RTL on air and building infrastructure for as little as 300 Rand per week. Have your or your company's name associated with the fastest growing online radio station in the world. Well, well, well. The RTL SA Top 10. Your Top 3. three, three. Contact RTL for more info on WhatsApp 064 134 0020 or email info at nolljohnson.co.za It's time to mass debate on RTLSA. RTL. Right, it's time to have a look at today in history. What happened on this day in the past? Let's find out. September 20th, 1519. Ferdinand Magellan sets out from Spain on a voyage to find a western passage to the Spice Islands in Indonesia. The Portuguese explorer is killed in the Philippines, but one of his ships eventually becomes the first to circle the world. 1958. In New York City, a brush with death for the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. The civil rights leader is seriously wounded when an apparently deranged woman stabs him during an appearance at a department store. King recovers from the attack. 2005. Simon Wiesenthal, the Holocaust survivor who pursued fugitive Nazis for decades after World War II, dies in Vienna, Austria. He was 96 years old. 1934. You have been through this a hundred times. I need to know, where do you find your courage? Sophia Loren, the Italian movie actress who became a global sex symbol, is born in Rome. And 1973, 
what's billed as the Battle of the Sexes takes place at the Houston Astrodome. That's where tennis star Billie Jean King defeats Bobby Riggs in straight sets. Also that same year, Operator, well, could you help me place this call? Singer and songwriter Jim Croce dies in a plane crash near Nakatosh, Louisiana. He was 30 years old. Today in history, September 20th, Ed Donahue, The Associated Press. You are listening to. You're listening to. You're listening to. You're listening to. Noel Johnson. Noel Johnson. Noel Johnson. On RTL PSA. Yes, it is uh, Nothing But Thieves with Amsterdam before that, Miley Cyrus, The Climb, and Noel Johnson's uh, You Are Loved, starting off three in a row right here on RTLSA. On the other side of this, we get into the Emmys. We find out what happened at the Emmy Awards this weekend. Oh, man. Glitzy affair, I tell you what. Big winners and some big losers as well. We look at it on the other side of this. Combine Investments, an impact venture capital company that turns entrepreneurs' dreams into reality. A core focus is to invest in high growth opportunities to maximize returns for shareholders, at the same time also providing a comprehensive service offering to cover all business needs. From small startups to larger companies, Kaban offers the entire spectrum of service offerings required to get business moving. Visit www.kaban.co.za for more information. Kaban Investments, turning entrepreneurs' dreams into reality. Own your piece of RTL by sponsoring a feature. Learning Top Bad Joke Friday in other news. Power Play Trivia. You will be helping keep RTL on air and building infrastructure for as little as 300 Rand per week. Have your or your company's name associated with the fastest growing online radio station in the world. world, world, world. The RTL SA Top 10. Your Top 3. three, three. Contact RTL for more info on WhatsApp 64 134 or email info at nolljohnson.co.za. It's time to mass debate on RTL SA. You're listening to RTLSA. You're listening to RTLSA. Right, so the Emmys took place this past weekend, and as usual, always a glitzy affair. And uh, I thought, seeing as though we always do heavy stuff, let's maybe keep it a little lighter on a Monday. Why not? Let's have a look. A big night for Ted Lasso and a big night for the small screen. Mm-hmm. Hello, everyone, and welcome to ET Live's Emmys After Show. I'm Denny Directo. And I'm Cassie Delora. We will have some exciting guests joining us to break everything down in detail. But first, let's take a look at the night's biggest moments, starting with the winningest shows. I'm talking about Ted Lasso, people. Ted Lasso picked up four statues for its first season, including Outstanding Comedy Series and Outstanding lead actor for Jason Sudeikis. Meanwhile, The Crown did what everyone expected. It swept the acting categories and snagged the Emmy for Outstanding Drama, winning seven total Emmys tonight. And we can't talk wins without mentioning Jean Smart's history-making victory. After 11 previous nominations, three of which she won in guest and supporting roles, the actress finally saw Emmy glory, winning Outstanding Lead Actress in a comedy series for her role in Hacks. And get this, Jean joins Betty White as the only two performers to complete an Emmy trifecta, winning in the comedy lead, supporting, and guest categories 
for all different shows. We love to yeah. see it. And let's not forget RuPaul, who just went down in Emmy's history books as the most awarded black artist ever for his work on RuPaul's Drag Race. After picking up his fourth consecutive victory in the Outstanding Competition Program category on Sunday. Whew, with all of that being said, let's dig into the big wins and what they mean. And helping us to do that tonight is ET Online senior producer and our very own TV expert, <laughs> Leanne Aguilera. Co signed. Co signed. <laughs> Seriously, this girl has seen everything on TV, starting with Ted Lasso. Leanne, gotta ask you, did you believe? Ted would win the big prize. <laughs> see, I'm so proud of you right there. Speaking if you didn't get a it, little Ted Lasso It's in fun, the show, people. It's in the show. If I could give you some biscuits right now to celebrate oh! Ted's win, I would. <laughs> I am not shocked at all that this show has absolutely crushed. You know, it was nominated for 20 nominations mm -hmm. this year, and it actually beat out Glee as the most nominated freshman comedy in Emmy's history. Wow. So the fact that they scored four wins tonight, you know, you know, that's a lot of goals. I can't get past the <laughs> fact that it took Schitt's Creek six seasons before the TV Academy said, this is the outstanding right. comedy of the year. And, of course, Ted Lasso, first season out the gate, boom, they won. Exactly. Uh, so, But it's kind of nice to see the, all that Emmy's love for a show that's so beloved but also mm -hmm. so new. Yes, a thousand percent. And I know a lot of people out there have mixed thoughts on season two. But if you have not watched <laughs> me, Ted Lasso. the one with the mixed thoughts. You're talking about it. me. Uh, it is such a fun show. Yeah. It was so necessary. Necessary during this time. It's just a little drop of heaven. So definitely check it out. And to think it all started with commercials yes. and then actually, fun fact, Jason Sudeikis's ex, ex, Olivia Wilde, yeah. was the one who really kind of propelled it to the success that it is and was like, you need to create something bigger than just these commercials. And <laughs> look what it's done. And I, look at all the Emmys that it's kind made. cool again. I think it I is. saw like, my favorite reaction to Ted Lasso and Jason winning too was that they're loving Jason's breakup era. They're like, this mm -hmm. is so hot for oh, right now. Oh, yeah. It is. I mean, look at him. Jason went on to win the Best Actor in a Comedy uh, Series, taking the stage to accept the award. And he gave the audience this special moment when he thanked his mentor, Lorne Michaels, from SNL. I want to thank Lorne, who went to go take a dump now. Perfect. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. He'll, he's going to get home. He's going to watch it. He loves watching the Emmys at home. Uh, full disclosure, <laughs> Lauren was in the press room, okay, during Jason's Not in the restroom. <laughs> well, SNL had just picked up Outstanding Variety Series, you know. Uh, but he did say that Jason will be making a return to SNL. So maybe, just maybe, we'll get another dance moment from Jason like he did in Ted Lasso. Leanne, speaking of Jason and just his role leading this whole ship and, and just being Ted and totally embodying it, were you surprised at all that he took home this win, or you were like, no, this is this is a shoe in Cassie, I would be surprised if he had not won tonight. Okay. <laughs> honestly, like, if Jason Sudeikis, Sudeikis had not walked home with the win, I think there honestly would have been riots in the street. Right. Because he just was so perfect in this first season. I will say, I am very glad that he dressed up for the occasion and left that tie-dye <laughs> hoodie at home. Uh, yeah. But considering Jason just won the Golden Globe, yep. the SAG mm -hmm. Award, yep. the Critics' Choice Award, had he not won this Emmy, it would have been a huge missed opportunity. By the way, we also did gift Jason a hoodie on the red carpet, so you'll have to uh, check Check out ET online for that full interview. But speaking of that interview, here's a little clip of Jason on the red carpet talking to ET about the show. We didn't know that going in. I, I mean, there was definitely a point of view and a philosophy of the character, and that sort of sprinkled through the show. But had no idea that that people were going to be um, so so wonderfully thirsty for it, you know, and keep wanting to go back for refills. The TV Academy also showed some love for his co-stars. And we got to talk about Hannah Waddingham. She took home the Supporting Actress Award toward the beginning of the night. Her speech brought a smile to our faces. Take a listen. I'm so privileged to work with you. I really am. Oh, my God, I'm giving a speech to the Emmys! <laughs> like you're watching a woman's dream come true. And she was having the most the fun best at night. the Emmys. You could tell she was enjoying every second, and purely that is someone who was living in the moment and so grateful to be there. I think it really set the tone for the Emmys, having her win one of the first awards of yeah. the night. It was just infectious joy, just like Ted, the show. Well, from comedy to drama, let's start with the winner for Outstanding Drama Series. The Crown. Thank you, the Television Academy. Thank you, Netflix. And uh, 
we're just, I, this is, we're going to have a party now. I'm, 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 I'm lost to words and I'm very, very grateful. Thank you. Leanne, now the crown was predicted to yeah. win and it has swept the night. Um, but here's the question. What makes the series stand out this year compared mm. to previous seasons so that it took home all these awards? Oh, my gosh, Cassie. I think it honestly is just because we entered the era of the one and only Lady Diana mm -hmm. mm. Like, mm -hmm. she, because we finally got to this time within The Crown, it really reinvigorated the show. But also, the acting was top notch. Like, everyone deserved to win in their categories. I love the fact that they pulled a Shit's Creek this year right? and just swept them all. Everything. Every drama acting category was someone from The Crown. But, yeah. you know, I think all eyes were on lead actress in a drama. Of mm -hmm. course, Olivia Coleman. And took that prize. She was up against her co-star Emma Corrin as Princess Diana, and she, you know, Emma won the Golden Globe. Were you a little surprised here that the, it ultimately went to Olivia? Honestly, I was a little bit surprised sure. because I did think that Emma had it in the bag, but I'm so thrilled that it did go to Olivia because this was her last year playing Queen right. Elizabeth II. She has not won an Emmy before, if you can believe it. Wow. So the fact that she was able to get this, and I love the fact that Claire Foy, who was our previous Queen Elizabeth, also mm -hmm. won an Emmy this year for just... She had a five minute scene. Wow. So she won for uh, Outstanding Guest Actress in a Drama, but. No pressure for um, uh, Amelda Staunton, who's taking over <laughs> as Queen Elizabeth in the next two seasons of The Crown. Also, yeah. Olivia Coleman won an Oscar and an Emmy now for playing British royalty. So, so Leanne, do I have to give this another shot? Yes. I, make, I didn't make it past episode five. Okay. I gotta be honest. Yes. I didn't. I, I fell asleep. Oh my God. Here's what I will say. If you want to get into the crown, start off with this most recent season, and that way you can just drop into this okay. new world. And then, if you like the pace of it all, you can go back and rewatch it. Look at it as like a mini chapter in history. Oh, there you go. That's a good okay. way. That's a good perspective. Like a yearbook. There. <laughs> you know? right. Well, listen. Some heavy hitters also in the lead actor category too. Let's take a look at tonight's winner. The Crown! Well, it continued to sweep the night as Josh O'Connor took home the award for lead actor. His portrayal of Prince Charles has been a critical favorite as well as the show's acclaim this year. Leanne, did you see this win coming? Sure did, Cass. <laughs> yeah. Sure did, Cass. Once you watch the season, you will see I that Josh seen it, yeah. <laughs> is amazing. And there will be times that you want to punch him in the face, but it's only because he's acting out history. <laughs> <laughs> and he's such a fun Guy, and I love how he also dedicated a speech to Emma, who yes. he shared so many scenes with in, in, in that series. I mean, of this course. show seems like it's got the tea. I think it's got the, the tea. Royal Cassie, tea. I think that this is a show for you. You guys, we got to talk about <laughs> limited series. They ended the whole night with that category, and I think mm -hmm. it's because there were so you, it was anybody's right. race Thousand to percent. win exactly. Well, it went to, of course, the Queen's Gambit. Gambit. Um, it was such a competitive category, uh, but this does wrap up a big run for the Queen's Gambit. Uh, why do you think it's deserving of the statue? I honestly think they said it properly at the end of the show. This show made chess cool again. <laughs> like, it brought the they sexy, sexy back yeah. to chess. Mm -hmm. right. um, but I really just think that seeing her in this role was something that we had never seen before. And it was at a time where we all were stuck inside. Right. So everyone was just talking about the show. I was a little worried that it's over popularity was going to take it out of the running, but it was nice to see that this show actually had what it takes to take home the gold. Mm -hmm. I was rooting for WandaVision. I'm not going to oh, lie. Okay. Mm. That would have been something if it I think a lot of people it were. Yes. Yeah. It would have been really cool to see Marvel be able to take home mm -hmm. the Emmy for that. But, you know, WandaVision did pick up a couple of creative arts Emmys, but uh, I think it really was between the Ke Queen's Gambit and Mayor of Easttown, but we did mm -hmm. see that Mayor got quite a few wins as well. They sure did. More British royalty right there. Mayor of Easttown actually <laughs> yeah. won three Emmys. It's such a Wins, by the way, it was nominated for 16. That's how good it is. It nabbed awards for including outstanding lead actress, supporting actress, and supporting actor. Kate Winslet, one of my favorites, accepted the award, her second Emmy in this category. And she acknowledged in her speech how important it is for women in Hollywood to support each other. Take a listen. I just want to acknowledge my fellow nominees in this decade that has to be about women having each other's backs. I support you. I salute you. I'm proud of all of you. What can't she do, okay? Seriously. And here's another... Goes to Whippy Cater. Look right? at you go. And I know this is her second Emmy win in this category, but I just love that she's embracing TV. Mm -hmm. She's embracing streaming. And obviously, she is embracing HBO, too. 
She's embracing where the good content is at. You guys, everyone has been sleeping on TV. I'm telling you, it's all we're consuming. Oh, my God, exactly. Well, we're going to be consuming some champagne with you later. So thank you for joining us today, Lee. We appreciate you as always. Say champagne. Uh-huh, that's right. But we're not done yet, though. You guys can catch more of her interviews, by the way, on etonline.com. So there we go, glitz and glamour and some um, really cool TV series to look out for if you haven't watched any of them yet. And let me tell you one thing, I've watched Queen's Gambit and um, it is excellent. It is really, really good. And um, yeah, they do make chess cool again. <laughs> it was really, really good. Really enjoyed that. Right, your top three brought to you by Creative Design and Brent coming up on the other side of this. Own your piece of RTL by sponsoring a feature. Learning topic. Bad joke Friday. In other news. Power play trivia. You will be helping keep RTL on air and building infrastructure for as little as 300 rand per week. Have your or your company's name associated with the fastest growing online radio station in the world. world, world, world. The RTL SA Top 10. Your top three. 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 Contact RTL for more info on WhatsApp 064 134 0020 or email info at nolljohnson.co.za. It's time to mass debate on RTL SA. Playlist is incredible. Love the music. Bass music. Entertaining. So entertaining. Entertaining. RTL is RTL. You're listening to RTL SA. This is your top three on RTLSA. Brought to you by Creative Design and Print. For all your specialized printing requirements, contact Lauren on 072-114-0329 or lauren.creativedesign at gmail.com. You ask for it, we play it. Your top three on RTLSA. Your top three brought to you by Creative Design and Print today. Fred Selection, that one great South African tune. Um, hello from Prime Circle. Before that, Panic at the Disco with High Hopes. And Lady Gaga, I haven't heard this song for a while. The Edge of Glory. Uh, what a song, man. What a great song. Absolutely love that song. Excellent selection from Fred. And of course, that brought to you by Creative Design and Print. This is your top three on RTLSA. Brought to you by Creative Design and Print. For all your specialized printing requirements, contact Lauren on 072-114-0329 or lauren.creativedesign at gmail.com. All right, so now you guys all know the voice. You guys all know Bob the Legend. <laughs> Him and I often have a little what we call caveman TV night where we stand around the fire and just talk nonsense. And one of these nights we came up with this idea to talk about 30 seconds that you will never get back. Bob is a wealth of information. He certainly is. And uh, he always has knowledge that you might not know. And it might not be important, but it is interesting nonetheless. So today we start this new feature called... And now, 30 seconds that you will never get back with Bob the Legend on RTLSA. In 1985, on the UK charts, there were three songs that made number one that all had the same song title. That title was The Power of Love. Now, can you think who those three performers would have been? The most famous one was Jennifer Rush with her song. Then the next one that you would know would be The Power of Love by Huey Lewis and the News that featured strongly in um, Back to the Future 1. And the last one was by Frankie Goes to Hollywood from their album Welcome to the Pleasure Drone. Now, there's a fact you can bore your friends with tomorrow. <laughs> Bob the Legend, out. And we're going to do this on a daily basis, just some interesting information brought to you by bob the legend and we'll do it around about this time every day so look forward to it 30 seconds that you will never get back with bob the legend and now 
30 seconds that you will never get back with Bob the Legend on RTLSA. Combine Investments an impact venture capital company that turns entrepreneurs' dreams into reality. A core focus is to invest in high growth opportunities to maximize returns for shareholders, at the same time also providing a comprehensive service offering to cover all business needs. From small startups to larger companies, Kaban offers the entire spectrum of service offerings required to get business moving. Visit www.kaban.co.za for more information. Kaban Investments, turning entrepreneurs' dreams into reality. You're listening to RTLSA. be on lockdown with Noel Johnson. You are listening to You listening to You're listening to You listening to Noel Johnson. Noel Johnson. Noel Johnson. And you're listening to Noel Johnson. And you're gonna party it up listening to Noel Johnson. As I was saying, you're listening to my mate Noel Johnson. You're listening to RTLSA. Right, so Monday Madness, we're about to get into it. And of course, uh, we had Eddie Kramer on the sh- while well, we interviewed him with SA Commuter the, about a week ago. And I played highlights of it on Thursday regarding Woodstock and stuff like that in Throwback Thursday. So I thought today what I'll do is I'll run the entire interview because it was thoroughly interesting. And to speak to somebody of this caliber, you can't let it go by without having a good listen. So here it is, Monday Madness Today, Eddie Kramer. This iconic South African is a world famous audio producer and engineer, as well as an author, renowned for the groundbreaking work with Jimi Hendrix, Eric Clapton, The Beatles, Carlos Santana, The Stones and Bowie. He's also engineered and or produced records for many other well-known artists, including Anthrax, Joe Cocker, Peter Frampton, John Mayall, 10 years after Matt the Hoople, John Sebastian, Carly Simon, Dion Warwick, and Small Faces. It is, of course, Eddie Cromer. He's joining myself and Noel today to talk about Woodstock, Blu-ray, and of course, anything else that comes to mind. I'm Janine Preston from Anywhere, Anytime, and today's show is brought to you by Sapro, exporting home abroad. And joining me is Noel Johnson, from RTL. Hi guys. Hello. Hi Eddie, how are you? Hi, this is Eddie Kramer, by the way. In uh, not not Kramer, it's Kramer. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, in South Africa it was Kramer, <laughs> but uh, it became Kramer when I got to America. It's like Charlize Theron, not Theron. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, or Theron, so we had Theron, Kramer right. versus Kramer. Yes, Kramer. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, how are you today? Lovely, thank you. It's it's great to talk to you. By the way, are you folks in Johannesburg or Cape Town? I'm in Johannesburg. Noel's in Durban. Yeah. Durban, right? Durban. I would I'd love to say sunny Durban, but it's been nothing but cloudy and miserable for the last year or so. <laughs> it's been terrible. <laughs> Well, and I'm sure you, you, you're you just dying to talk about your favorite subject, which is Woodstock. <laughs> um, it's, it's, a, it's an item in, in my past. <laughs> I'm sure you've been overwhelmed with questions about your experience at Woodstock. How did you end up there? Um, in a VW uh, bug. That's how I ended up there. <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> It's, it's, a bit of a, it's a bit of a story, but um, essentially I got a phone call um, 
I think a week or so before the Woodstock event uh, from the, the, the directors of the, of the movie, uh, Michael Wadley. And uh, he said, well, you know, you're quite well known for your sounds and everything, and you do a lot of live recording and you're working with Hendrix and Jimmy is going to be heading, he's the top of the bill. Would you like to come up and record it? And I said, yeah, yeah, sure, why not? I mean, everything was very casual in those days. Hey, just drive up to Woodstock, record a couple of bits and pieces. We thought maybe it'll be 100,000 people there. Not too bad, right? It turned out to be <laughs> half a million people. Almost, it was a small city. And it was, the only way I can describe it is three days of drugs and hell. Mm. Oh, Sounds weird. fun. <laughs> Sounds like a festival. Well, it was. It was. It was the most. Unique, it was the most unique festival um, ever. I think it, it was groundbreaking, and certainly it made a political statement as well. I mean, apart from the fact that the bands, uh, a lot of the bands were young musicians who were just starting off with their careers, and this made a lot of folks. Like you mentioned, Carlos Santana, after Woodstock, his career blew up fantastically, uh, as with Johnny Winter and so many of the artists who, who played there. It was a remarkable um, event. I read uh, when I was doing some research on Woodstock, I read that Richie, um, he started, Richie Havens, he, he, uh, he played the opening set and uh, Sweetwater was due to play after him. But because they couldn't get to the festival, he played everything in his backpack the entire repertoire of every song that he knew <laughs> until they could get there. Yeah, he had, he had a bunch of stuff in there. Well, there's a funny story attached to the actual um, physical stage itself. If you can imagine, um, the stage is, it, you know, there's, the audience is up on a hill and sort of sloping down in a sort of a natural amphitheater towards the stage. And um, on the stage itself, the, the crew had managed to build a circular substage with wheels on it. And the idea was the first half of this circle, you had the first band and behind that other half was the second band ready to go on. And all they had to do was turn the turntable and you'd have the next band ready to go. <laughs> Unfortunately, they try to make the first turn and all the bloody wheels fell off. <laughs> so that's where the term, you, the wheels went away or the wheels fell off. Comes the wheels fell off, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and where were you? Hopefully not under the stage. You were in front doing the recording. No, I was not in front. I was actually behind the stage about 200 yards in, a track, in the back end of a tractor trailer. Um, I had a little space if you can imagine, eight foot by eight foot. It had two eight-track tape, uh, two eight-track one-inch tape machines, a small console, one limiter, I believe, and piles of tape. And on, literally, really? we would, you know, if you can imagine at 15 inches per second on a, on a one-inch roll of tape, you only have a half hour of time. So when you get to the 25-minute point, you would start the second machine, so you always had a cross fade for, for later on for mixing. But it was it, it was absolutely the most uh, exhausting thing that one can imagine. We were up till three in the morning, and we started nine. <laughs> wow! Right. We slept on the floor of the truck. <laughs> well, at least you went in the water because apparently it rained and there was just mud everywhere. Oh, apparently it rained. I would say it was a deluge. And then you see the steam. <laughs> I wasn't uh, there, so that's what I say, apparently. <laughs> yeah. No, it was, a, it, was a, it was a bloody deluge because, it, you know, Woodstock, it's upstate New York, you know, and when they get storms, they get storms. It's like, I don't know what it's like in Durban, but this is an upstate New York, heavy duty rain, you know. And afterwards, all the kids were just saying, yeah, let's take this hill and and they would just be sliding down in the mud because it became a mud fest. Mm. Wow. Um, I, I have another last question about Woodstock and then we'll move on, but I have to know two things. 
why did Jimi Hendrix want to be last? Was there something that he's, because I know it was. A... No, he, he was always supposed to close the show. Um, it was supposed to be Sunday night. Night. <laughs> However, if you take into account the weather, the fact that instead of a band going on for 45 minutes or an hour, they would jam and that would last an hour and a quarter, an hour and a half, change of, you name it. And so if you take all of those moments, it just backs everything up. So poor Jimmy, who was going to close the show Sunday night, closed the show Monday morning at 9 a.m., which was really not a good scene. But he, he was magnificent. His performance is searing. It's just one of the greatest uh, performances of his career. And certainly the, the Star Spangled Banner, um, that, that is imprinted into the brains of pretty much everybody who was there. And then the whole nation heard it and went, wow, this is quite something. It's amazing. Yeah. I actually, I actually wanted to ask you a question about that. Because being physically present when somebody does something so iconic how do you carry it through for the rest of your life and and i'm sure that you tell the story with absolute fondness was that always going to be part of the show or was it just something that happened oh jimmy had been using that to close shows for quite a while um this was the most adventuresome performance um, he adapted the way he played it uh, for the situation. And this was obviously monumental and he knew it. And so he gave it everything he had, I think. Um, another iconic moment, if, if I may, uh, that I, sh I would like to share with, with my South African audience, which is so incredible. I, I'm so happy to actually speak to South Africa live. This is very unusual and very cool. Um, the, I, by the way, I'm writing a book uh, about my life. It's called From the Other Side of the Glass, and we're very fortunate. We're actually going to make a documentary film about it, which is in the works right now. But one of the stories I like to tell is the first time I actually met Jimi Hendrix. I'd known about him. Um, obviously, you're being in London, you know, it's 1967. And Jimmy had had two songs out. He had Hey Joe um, and Wind Cries Mary. We're all very familiar with him. I'm working at a studio in London called Olympic Studios, which was the place where I very fortunately got to record Jimmy and the Stones and the Beatles and other bands that you don't know of. <laughs> but on this particular day, um, he came into the studio and was sitting in the corner. This was in January of 67, and it was bloody cold. And he was sitting in the corner, all huddled up, huddled up with a little raincoat on. And he wasn't saying much. The roadies bringing the gear when they set it up. And he switched, on his, he switched on his amp. And I was about six feet away. And I was running around setting microphones and going my, doing my usual engineering thing. And he, he hits a chord. And my life changed in that particular moment. I have never felt so overwhelmed by the sound of an instrument and the person who played it. It was as if his whole being, his mind and his body and the guitar and the amp was all this one thing. And it felt like it came from outer space. It just hit me like uh, a geostorm, you know, and, and the hair on the back of my head just went straight up. And I have never felt anything quite like it. And it altered the light, my, my path in my life. And there you are. That's, Something I wanted to share with you. And what were you doing at the time? I mean, you were obviously setting up microphones, but well, we were recording a, an album called "Yeah, this was Are You Experienced." This was the uh, the first album we were working on, and uh, it was great because I ran inside into the control room and started recording it. I said, "Hang on, Jimmy," and I started recording a few bits and pieces for him. I said, "Come in and have a quick listen," and he comes in and he listens and he looked at me and went and he smiled and he ran right back into the studio and said, well, try this. And then it was like, who could top the other person? You know, we, we had this wonderful relationship of if you could do that, well, I'll just try to do something better. You know, it was always <laughs> about how do I improve what he's playing out there and make it even crazier or 
different. And what was he like as a person? He was wonderful and funny as hell. I mean, he, self-deprecating humor. He would take the piss out of me and Noel and Mitch and himself. Um, everything was fun. If it wasn't fun, what the hell is the point, you know? Mm. Wow. Um, my last question about Woodstock, because I'm sure Noel's got a few of his own, but he's the muso. Um, if you were in the front of Woodstock, how did you get the bathroom? And I'm not talking about you particularly, I'm talking about the festival goers. Because from the pictures, it looked like just a mess of people. Well, they had porta parties around the perimeter. Ah, that's our mess, somewhere on the pictures. <laughs> and, and also, like, they didn't have, you know, there's a bunch of trees out there too, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was always a question I wanted to ask someone, was if you were in the front, how did you get to the bathroom? <laughs> I think I think kids I think the kids were being very inventive. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, do you think that Woodstock set the tone for how festivals in the future should run? Well, it certainly was a benchmark. Um, I'm not sure if they were going to be run like that. Uh, certainly, a massive festival like that, um, it did set the tone. It, you, you're right. I mean. Uh, everything that followed was either going to be as well organized or not as well organized. And you've, you, we are aware of some of the festivals that didn't go so well, where there were riots, et cetera, et cetera. But it, certainly having a big event is still today, if, if we could do it, no, we can't because of COVID, but if you could, you would have Glastonbury, you would have all these incredible festivals still cranking. Yeah. Why did you not um, record, why did you not get asked to record the soundtrack afterwards or to be involved in the production of the soundtrack when you'd done all the hard work? Well, I think it was by virtue of the fact that there was one person who was quote unquote employed to do that and they had a particular vision and I disagreed with that. And so it was fine. I mean, there was a lot of work that had to be done in a way I wish I had done it in another way of thinking, you know, it's done. I have remixed a lot of it. Uh, my, for, I've remixed all of Jimmy's stuff, and it sounds a, a whole lot better. Um, I, I'm, prou I'm very proud to say because, uh, you know, with modern technology, uh, I'm able to dive into the minutiae of his sounds and what was going on there and bring up the very best, you know, using the latest digital technology and the, and the vintage analog stuff and combining those two worlds, you can get some pretty damn fine results. I noticed that uh, Rana released a box set um, with, with you having reconstructed a lot of the co concert um, tapes and sound, what they call them, soundboard reels. Hmm. Was that quite an exciting project? Um, I'm not sure which one this is. What's the, do you know have the title for it? Because I've done so many. No, it just said um, that it was more than 60 with Eddie and Lee Osborne. Right. Lee Osborne was the assistant engineer and I was a senior engineer. And yeah, I mean, we, we changed. In other words, I would be a 12 hours and then he would take another, you know, we would switch over. Okay. Um, I don't have that box. I'd like to get it. In fact, I'll call my friends uh, right after the show. <laughs> you should, because we tried to get a copy and they said they were sold out. <laughs> Eddie, the difference between live mixing and um, studio mixing, and I'm not talking about necessarily today. Let's, let's talk about in that time. What were the biggest challenges and the biggest difference when you were like doing a live recording at Woodstock versus being in studio with Jimmy doing the recording? That was a challenge, as I said. I mean, we only had maybe 12 microphone inputs and you, you would have to try to figure out how to put a microphone between two drums to get a drum Two, two tom toms, you know, that sort of thing. I don't want to go too far into the technical side of things, but it was very restrictive. Only actually, 
on the eight track machine, there were not even that many tracks for audio because the eighth track was pulse tone for the movie to sync up to. And then he had an audience track, which has also had some music on. So really basically seven tracks, if you can think about that in today's market, when you have Pro Tools and unlimited, you know, 100, 150, 200 tracks, if you want to. Uh, that's the restriction. So you had to really have your act together to be able to pre-mix a whole bunch of drums onto one track, a mono recording. That's that's the thing. If you can do that, then, you know, you are reasonably successful. <laughs> But how do you take something like that when you speak about a mono recording on the drum track and turn it into 5.1 stereo, for example? That is very tricky. It can be done, but it takes, takes a lot of work. It, yes, it, you have to actually go in and actually um, rebuild that mono track and split it up into various frequencies and then send it. It's, I won't go into it. It's too... It's, it, <laughs> There are many, many more interesting things to talk about. <laughs> Sorry, that's just that's just my musician side coming out there. <laughs> I see there there was an interview on the fiftieth anniversary of Woodstock, which was two years ago. Um, the couple that appeared on the cover of the album, uh, how were they chosen? I mean, like the photo? Did you get a bunch of photos or? I, that was something I wasn't involved with. I think the record, well, I think the record company, which was Atlantic, I think it was Atlantic, um, they probably gathered photographs and they had their, uh, their department that does covers, find something that was cool. And, and that's how they did it. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, <laughs> that whole Woodstock thing, I mean, when it first came out, it was, I don't know, there was, the country was going through a lot of stuff. And I think the, the positive attitude of Woodstock, here's a half a million people getting together, being very peaceful uh, and just enjoying music and lifting their spirits. And I think we need more of that. I think that's what proved that music brings people together and it has this knack of making things happen. And that's what Woodstock seemed to have done. It did. It really did. I see you wrote a book on um, called Hendrix, setting the the record straight. Yes. And you toured South Africa with it. Uh, yes, I was part of a thing I was doing with Sure Microphones, uh, who I work with and help design some of their mics. And they decided, hey, let's do a tour of South Africa. They had some friends um, who distributed the Sure Mics, and we said, oh, let's sort of combine this. And I'll never forget, this was 1994, I believe. I had left South Africa in 1960, um, at the, in December of 1960, and then, as, as you know, went to England. And this was my first time back since that point. Wow. And it was very emotional. I mean, you know, we flew into Johannesburg and then flew down to Cape Town. Oh, just walking around the streets of Cape Town and... Breda Street and where my old school was, I used to go to uh, Saks, uh, South and Carolina. Okay. And um, the next Saks boy, yeah. And tell me, did you did you fly in with SAA? Tell me you did. I try to remember. It's it's a long time ago. It's very possible. I know. Uh, I think we did. I think we flew from. I think we flew from New York. Down to. And then we went down to, I think, to Florida, and then I can't remember anything. Anyway, uh, it, it was just, a, to me, a, a wonderful uh, going back down memory lane. Um, we stayed at the Mount Nelson Hotel, which was, I remember I used to, going to school, I was on the top deck of the double-decker bus coming down um, this one avenue and i remember looking out the window and see you can see mount nelson hotel and i was about 13 14 years old i said to myself one day i'm going to stay in that damn hotel and it, it became reality it became a reality and what other towns did you see well just to have a cape town i mean that was uh that was, that's all we could fit in but uh yeah yeah my brother and my sister were born in cape town my my brother's a professor of uh, 
uh, history at uh, Trinity College in Dublin. My sister is a retired attorney. She lives in London. Um, and uh, my dad passed away quite a few years ago. My mom, who was English, immigrated to South Africa in 1939 when war broke out. And she passed away in London. She was almost 101. And she got a letter from the Queen. So there's this lovely South African, British, American. Well, that's why we were so excited to find you. We were on this journey with Woodstock and up pop Eddie Cromer, a man who was born in Cape Town. And we were so excited. And you know what? If, you were, if, you're, if you're born in South Africa, or in Cape, wherever, particularly for me, for Cape Town, you know, there's something about it. It's in your blood. And I can find myself now, as I'm talking, I've become even more South African. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully you'll visit your local South African store and buy something South African, just because you can. Yes, we will. <laughs> um, I was going to ask, do you, not obviously you miss your home country, but do you ever sit back and wonder what life would have been like if you never left, if you'd stayed in South Africa, compared to what you have done? Certainly in the beginning, in, in the 60s, in late and early 60s, I think it would have been very tricky. Uh, my dad was uh, quite vocally um, outspoken, and I know we were, um, we were being watched. I know it was very tricky for us to get, get out of the country. Yeah. Uh, and he had many friends who were in opposition uh, to the uh, old government, but there you are. That's a story for another day. <laughs> I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> <laughs> Did you meet a lot of the artists that you worked with at Woodstock? Because I, I see the, the, a lot of the guys that you eventually represented or worked with came from uh, Woodstock. Well, Johnny Winter, I was already I just done his first album. Uh, Carlos Santana became a good friend and I worked with him co consequently. Joe Cocker, I'd worked with in England. Jimmy, of course. Um, uh, there were a number of the artists I'd actually done some work with, and then a after Woodstock, as their careers exploded, I got, got the calls, you know. In terms of things like your Kramer guitar sounds, tell us a little bit more about that. Well, the Kramer guitar sounds, meaning the, the guitar tones that I get, or the guitar itself? I was telling Janine, I was telling Janine last night, as a as a musician i don't know how many times through pro tool pro tools i've used your sound banks as as, as sound em emulators and things like that as pads and patches and stuff like that so i think where janine was going with this was like how did that actually come about that your sounds and especially named your the, the kramer sound banks and um emulated amps and stuff like that. Yeah, well, so I was approached by this company in, in, in uh, Israel, actually, they're called Waves, W-A-V-E-S, and they are the biggest in the world for uh, what we call plugins for the recording world. And this was many years ago, and we decided, okay, what, what's the, what are you trying to do here? What, what, what's the vibe here? And I said, well, if I'm going to do a series of plugins, they have to achieve three things. I want it to sound as if it's recorded at Olympic Studios with that type of sound for the guitar, with the sound for drums, et cetera, et cetera. And that's what we modeled it after. And we got an old tape machine. And you, there's a thing called Kramer tape. If you plug in that, it's a, based on an old tape machine from Ampex that was at Olympic. Today, people love that thing because they can plug in this vintage sound to warm up the digital sound, which is kind of an anomaly really when you think about it. But the guitar stuff was based upon the old Olympic equalizer that had a wonderful, incredible EQ sound to it. So the mo I, I use it myself still today and a lot of people do. You, you want that guitar to pop through the mix, you just punch this one thing and bang, there it is. It's got a unique sound with transformers in. That's what we were trying to do is to emulate what analog sounds like in the digital world. 
Well, I'll tell you what, us artists of today appreciate you very much for that. <laughs> My pleasure. Right, so that's where we'll leave that part. We're going to get into your uh, power play trivia question on the other side of this. And when we come back to Eddie Kramer, we're going to talk more about his life and uh, find out more about, about who he is as a character, as well as the book and the movie that are imminent. Combine Investments, an impact venture capital company that turns entrepreneurs' dreams into reality. A core focus is to invest in high growth opportunities to maximize returns for shareholders, at the same time also providing a comprehensive service offering to cover all business needs. From small startups to larger companies, Kavan offers the entire spectrum of service offerings required to get business moving. Visit www.kavan.co.za for more information. Kavan Investments, turning entrepreneurs' dreams into reality. Own your piece of RTL by sponsoring a feature. Burning Top Bad Joke Friday in other news. Power Play Trivia. You will be helping keep RTL on air and building infrastructure for as little as 300 Rand per week. Have your or your company's name associated with the fastest growing online radio station in the world. world, world, world. The RTL SA Top 10. Your top three. 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 Contact RTL for more info on WhatsApp 064 134 0020 or email info at noeljohnson.co.za. It's time to mass debate on RTL SA. You're listening to RTLSA. Time to test your knowledge with Power Play Trivia. And your Power Play Trivia to, uh, question today brought to you by Bev Miller. Which of Shakespeare's plays were the longest? Over 4,000 lines. And the correct answer, as suggested by Zelda, Marius, Lauren, and Bev, was in fact Hamlet. So what I thought I would do, instead of just like affirming the answer, I thought I would take the longest Shakespeare play, condense it into three minutes, so now you know what happened in the play as well. Many years ago, in Denmark, there was a prince called Hamlet. One day, Hamlet's father, the king, dies suddenly, and Hamlet is very sad. After this, Hamlet's mother, Gertrude, gets married again. Very quickly, she marries her husband's brother, Claudius, and Claudius is now the king. Oh, how could you do this to me? One night, Hamlet's friend Horatio tells him that there is a ghost in the castle. It is the ghost of Hamlet's father. Claudius killed me with poison. Hamlet, you must punish Claudius for me. Hamlet is confused. He doesn't know if he believes the ghost, and he doesn't know what to do. Hamlet now acts very strangely. He is mean and angry, and he upsets his girlfriend, Ophelia. Go away! Leave me alone! Oh, he is so mean! One day, a group of actors come to the castle. And Hamlet makes a plan. He asks the actors to change their play. The new play will show a king poisoned like Hamlet's father. With this play, I will catch the king.
When Claudius watches the play, he looks very worried and runs away. Hamlet sees him and he knows the truth. Claudius is very worried about Hamlet now and makes a plan with Ophelia's brother, Laertes. You will fight him and we will put poison on the sword and in his drink too. Laertes and Hamlet fight. Laertes cuts Hamlet. But in the fight, Hamlet takes Laertes' sword and cuts him with it too. Here, Hamlet, drink this. No, thank you, Mother. I'm not thirsty. No, don't! <gasps> It was him. He poisoned us all. Finally, Hamlet knows he must stop Claudius. Ah, have this and this! All the royal family are now poisoned. And Hamlet tells his friend that there must be a new king. Goodbye, my prince. A Shakespearean tragedy in three minutes, and now you know what happened. <laughs> right, so there we go. Your power play trivia brought to you by Bev Miller. Right, let's get back into the Eddie Kramer piece now. The segment two, like I said, we talk about more about his life. What is your journey from, from, from Woodstock? What was your journey like after that? Did you have a clear direction of where you were going, or did it just happen? Well, 1969 was a very busy year. Um, I started building Electric Lady Studios for Jimmy. Um, I was recording Led Zeppelin II, uh, Woodstock, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So it was, I was very busy that year. And I made the decision that once Electric Lady was up and running, which would be another six or nine months, it was we didn't open until May of 1970. And that studio cost a million dollars in 1970 dollars. So that was a lot of money in those days. Sure. But when it opened, Jimmy was so happy. He lived around the corner because uh, if, if you guys know anything about New York City, it's on a grid, right? So in the village downtown on West 8th Street, that's where the studio was, uh, is still today. And Jimmy lived around the corner in the village on 12th Street. So he, you could, I can see him now in my mind's eye. He's walking down 8th Street, carrying the guitar. He's got his hat with the feather, and he's got the bell-bottom jeans on. And people nod to him. They're very respectful. They don't come up to him. He hits the buzzer on the, on the uh, intercom, comes downstairs into the studio, and he's home. This was his home. He loved that studio with a passion because this was the first studio that had been built specifically for the artist, with the artist in mind. And this, he felt when he walked in there, he was enveloped in this wonderful place that gave him the best sound that he had ever heard. And he was happy. The last four months of his life, he was extremely happy. We worked day and night in that studio and it was great. So from 69 going through to 70s, and then for the next four years, I ran Electric Lady Studios. Uh, and produce a lot of bands. Carly Simon I produced, and you mentioned uh, that was there. And after Jimmy died, it was, wow, our world looked like it was going to fall apart. But we all knew that Jimmy would have wanted us, to, the show has to go on, the studio has to go on, move forward, don't, don't look back. Out of everybody you've worked with, who was the best vocalist that you've ever worked with? Wow, that's an interesting question. Um, male or female? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Nah. Oh boy, for sheer style, Jimmy, no question. He was not the greatest singer in the world. That's that's for sure. But and he was very embarrassed about his voice. He, you know, I I had to put three screens around him so nobody could see him. He <laughs> was very he was very shy about his voice. He thought he had the worst voice in the world. I thought he was a great song stylist. In terms of great vocals, Carly Simon, absolutely mentioned, comes to mind. Um, so many great R&B singers uh, like Lena Horne um, 
and, and folks like that in New York when I was at Electric Lady. Um, boy, uh, you put me on the spot there, but I think I'm looking at today's market. I have found some young singers that I'm working with now in Los Angeles, because here's the thing with modern technology. I'm here in Canada and I can work direct with my singers in London, England, in Switzerland or in LA, wherever they are. And I found a bunch of young kids like 21 years old who are just amazing songwriters. This is a guy I've been working with named Michael Tomino. He's a 21 year old actor for TV and he's a great singer. And there's, there's this whole bank of new talent coming up the ranks who are really interested in what happened in the past and take some of those ideas and incorporate them into something very contemporary. And I love that. I, I continue to work with young talent. I think that's most important. Uh, young engineers, young artists who are just developing and I help them with my knowledge and I love getting involved with everything that's new because it keeps the brain fresh. The rest of me is falling apart, but that's another story. <laughs> I think that's the same with all of us. <laughs> yes. Speak for yourself. I'm feeling great. <laughs> <laughs> and have you ever come across Trevor Rabin from the, the old I've never Rabin's. met him. He's, he's an amazing guy. I mean, what a fantastic ranch. I was always very impressed with his work. Uh, there's a bunch of South African guys who did really well. Um, Mutt Lang, uh, Trevor Rabin. Uh, Manfred well, Mann. Manfred Mann, okay. Manfred Mann, I met him in London in 1963, four, no, a little <laughs> bit later. Yeah, about 1964. And I built him his first PA system for the Manfred Mann, Mike Hug Blues Brothers. Wow. That's and he taught jazz. He taught me jazz, piano. Wow. That's amazing. I didn't wow. know Manfred Mann was South African. Oh, yeah. Big time. Shows you what I know about music. <laughs> when, did, when did you work with, with a band like The Stones? And the reason I want to ask a question about The Stones is because did you work with them in the early days? Yes. I started working with them at Olympic in 1966 when we just made the move from the center of London to Barnes, where the, the new studio was. And uh, by the way, th that's oh. now Olympic Cinema, it's now called the Olympic Cinema, it's no longer a recording studio. But in 66, when we moved there, um, the Stones were one of our first clients. And uh, I did the Between the Buttons album, the Flowers album, Satanic Majesties. And then in 67, I did um, Beggar's Banquet with Jimmy Miller producing. Now that was a great album because yeah. Jimmy Miller, who came from the States to work with the Stones, he and I worked together on Traffic. And because of the success of the Traffic singles, I'm a man and all of that, the Stones asked Jimmy Miller to work with them. And he was, fit. He was their best producer, I think, without question. Yeah. But okay, the question I wanted to ask is obviously the Stones are still around today and 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 still working to a certain degree um, yeah and what i have to say think? i have to i have to say something i have to interject because my heart goes out because charlie i i i thought charlie was the most wonderful human being charlie watts god bless him god rest in peace he was an incredible drummer but not only was he an incredible drummer he was a gentleman and yeah loved art. He was a fantastic painter and drawer, uh, cartoonist as well. Sure. But he loved jazz. And that's how we, we, we hooked up on jazz because he was, yeah. he was basically a jazz drummer. And uh, yeah, so working with the Stones, going back to your question. Sorry. What, <laughs> what I was asking that you, you work with a band like that in the early stages, and you've yeah. seen them over 40 years to where they are now 40 or 50 years how do you feel about their growth and, and progression or has it been something that you feel is maybe a regression to a certain degree after their high as you know when when they were at their absolute peak i think the stones have been wonderful over the years there's been very few bad spots i don't think there's any such thing as a bad spot for the stones they've yeah. grown and they 
I have to say, you know, Mick and Keith, they keep their ears open to the ground and they they know what's going on. You you were playing uh, that track. Miss you, yeah. Now, that is, if you had listened to the Stones earlier, it had nothing to do with what they, what they did was they just figured, okay, this is what's happening now. And here's how we can put our sound mm. to fit with the contemporary sound. They never changed their sound specifically, un, un, just incorporated some of the new stuff. And it's a tribute to it's a really a tribute to the, no, it's a tribute to their imagination and their willingness and their openness to embrace the new stuff. How much of a role does the producer play in that? Big, huge. Yes, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Jimmy Miller was quote unquote the guy. He brought stuff out of them. I watched him work with them, and it just he was mo the model that I used for myself, you know, because when I wanted to become a record producer, I have Jimmy Miller in my brain, you know, because of his ability to mm. get the band excited, help them write the song, help them do the arrangement, and he even play drums, you know, he's he does that kind of, he's fabulous. So the producer's ideas along with the band you know you don't want to hammer them over their head you just want to sort of guide them down the path you know you don't want to sort of impose your will and in the final segment on the other side of this we look at where he is now how he's dealing with COVID, and the way forward um, for this prolific producer own your piece of rtl by sponsoring a feature burning top bad joke friday in other news power play trivia you will be helping keep rtl on air and building infrastructure for as little as 300 rand per week have your or your company's name associated with the fastest growing online radio station in the world, 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 world. The RTL SA Top 10. Your top three. 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 Contact RTL for more info on WhatsApp 064 134 0020 or email info at noljohnson.co.za. It's time to mass debate on RTL SA. Playlist is incredible. Love the music. Best music. Entertaining. So entertaining. Entertaining. RTL. RTL. <laughs> You're listening to RTLSA. You're listening to RTLSA. So it was very cool catching up with uh, Eddie Kramer and getting to know the man that is a little bit better because he is an absolute icon in the industry. And any musician that has worked with any of his sound effects will agree and attest to the fact that he created something which has made our lives all a lot easier and um in this next piece we find out more about the movie the book and all that stuff and what's happening around COVID and what his plans are going forward what is your way forward during COVID? i mean you're obviously at home you're helping everybody online but after COVID. Do you think you're going to continue working online or are you going to go back into the world? I think it'll be a mix uh, because obviously health is a big part of what is going on now. We, I can't go into a studio with a bunch of guys. No, that's not going to happen. Um, my wife and I have both been double vaccinated, but now, you know, there's the Delta variant and all this kind of stuff. And I'm very, uh, I'm going to be very careful about my next moves. I think if the studio has adopted the right protocol, everybody wear a mask, you know, you have to make sure that you've all been double vaxxed, then maybe, you know, I'll go in with one or two people, see how that works. But for now, it's all on the internet. It's, it's all on <laughs> Zoom and audio movers. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but that's how I'm able to be in sync perfectly with virtually no latency with artists wow. all around the world. 
That's great. That's amazing. I do miss it. I miss the contact. I miss the one-on-one. -on -one. I miss being in the studio with the band. Because that's the Bob. Oh, I miss that terribly. But you have to you have to find a balance, you know. What made you decide to move to Canada? I uh, we I had an offer of a, a job here in in, in Toronto, and uh, that was okay for a while. And uh, I've moved on, and I have some other things and better things now uh, that I'm working on. Um, but you're going to stay in Canada? Oh yeah, no, we we just applied for permanent residency. Yes, we love we love it here. Healthcare system is great. Is it a bit cold there? <laughs> We've had, I have to say, where we live in, in this county, uh, it's about two and a half hours northeast of Toronto, going up, the, it's in Lake Ontario. It is, we had the best summer, 80 plus degrees okay. during the day, at night a little cooler. The winter time gets tough, there's no question. We get snow like two, three feet, you know, but you get used to it, you know. You've got the you got the clothes for the weather. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, you, have have, you have to have four wheel drive, which is what we have, and you know you, you get the streets are plowed. You know, once you get out to the country, it gets a little trickier. But the Canadians are tough, man. They they they've been doing this for a, a couple of minutes. I think. You now developed a movie, and yeah, tell us a little bit more about that. Well, the movie's based upon, it actually ties into the book. Um, the book's called From the Other Side of the Glass, and it's my journey from South Africa all the way, many trips to London and back, and, and growing up in a musical household, uh, studied piano, went to the South African College of Music, all of that, and then got into jazz when I was a teenager. I was listening in my bedroom in Cape Town. I had this little shortwave radio. So as you as you probably know, there was no TV in South Africa until what nineteen uh, nineteen seventy seven seventy six. Yeah. It's just that blows. <laughs> but anyway, I would listen to the BBC overseas radio service, uh, Voice of America, and on shortwave you'd hear it coming, you hear the swishing sound, and that's what got me. Years later, that's how I heard that phasing sound, which was very much like that. But anyway, that's what I listened to was blues, rock, Elvis Presley. And I got into a lot of trouble at school because I was banging away on my desk playing piano. Krama, get to the principal's office. <laughs> the accent is perfect. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> <laughs> Janine, you were going to ask me a question. I'm sorry. You wanted to know. So the book is all about that, coming to England, um, seeing the Beatles for the first time. Um, Did you see them it, in the cabin? No, I saw them on TV for the first time. I mean, it, it blew my mind. I was in 62, I believe. But then I figured out what I wanted to do was to combine electronics and music and I was working for this ad agency and I opened up the TV yearbook, which showed where all the recording studios were. I said, that's it. That's what I want to do. And I closed my eyes with a pen. I went, Ch -ch 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 -ch. wrote letters off and I got one reply back. It was Ad Vision Sound Studios in, in 83 New Bond Street in London. That was my first venture into recording. Um, and from there, I went to Pi Studios and that's where I recorded The Kinks and Petula Clark and Sammy Davis and people oh, like that. Weird. And then from there, I had my own studio. And from after that, um, that's when I got to go to Olympic in early 66 and came to America in 68, continued working, and here I am. How do you, how do you feel being like regarded like this? Because, I mean, you've worked with the biggest stars in the industry and yet you are also one of them. I mean, you're, you're having a movie made about your life. It's, it's, it's like, you know, I just, I don't know. You know, you know what I call myself? I'm just a little old knob twiddler, mate. I just twiddle the knobs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> you're the no, magician. Than, do you have a, do you have a lot of dirty, dirty secrets? Do you have, do you have secrets? Do you, do you have blackmail 
information that you can uh, use? <laughs> or is that, is that policy for what happens on tour stays on tour? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sure if I dug deep enough, I could find it, but uh, that's not my vibe. I don't like to, uh, that doesn't. No, we're just teasing you. I, I, I think. You <laughs> I think coming from where you are, we're so proud to call you South African. And I think you should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. When is that oh, going to happen? Thank you. I, I, that would be an honor. Maybe you could put my name forward. Oh, definitely. We'll vote for you. I think South Africa, with a whole, of, like, a whole bunch of us will vote for you. We'll, we'll get, you a, get you a star on Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> Here's a plan. Do they have stars for rock artists? Yeah, but they also have for engineer, you know, Al Schmidt, who's a very famous engineer, worked at Capital for many, many years. He was a dear friend who passed this this last year, this year. 90, he was 92. He he worked with Sinatra and everybody you can think of. And he was the nicest guy, genius engineer. He got a, war, a star on the Walk of Fame right outside Capital, in fact. Yeah. My word. I, I, I just oh, want to ask one more question man. because we're going to have to close very shortly. And I'm sure Janine will close for us. But my question to you is, what advice would you give a youngster that wants to pursue a career similar to what you have done in the, in the sense of production and things like that? Today, you have to go to school. You have to learn the techniques. They're quite complicated. Uh, and, you, and you must be able to play an instrument. It doesn't have to be brilliantly just as long as you understand music and can play a guitar or a piano or something or read music or understand it because that's that's the core of what we do mm -hmm. i approach everything from a musical perspective the electronic side the all the digital side all that that is secondary if i love the song if the artist is singing beautifully and can communicate that emotion with me and then subsequently with the audience and I've captured it and make it sound good, then I've done my job. And it certainly sounds like you've done your job over the years. Congratulations from myself, Noel, and the rest of South Africa. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Noel. It's, it's been really a, an honor and a pleasure and I miss South Africa. But since I see you all later. <laughs> Well, Eddie Kramer, it was a really cool interview. And that's where we're going to leave the show for today as well. We'll be back tomorrow for Tuesday Trends. And um, yeah, tomorrow is going to be a very interesting show. Lots of fun. Um, probably some newsworthy pieces coming through as well. But we'll have to wait and see what's going on. Today was very quiet in the news. I'm quite happy about that. <laughs> be cool, be safe. Remember what I always say. For bugs you, you got to deal with it. Love you a long time. Catch you tomorrow at 10 a.m. Combine Investments, an impact venture capital company that turns entrepreneurs' dreams into reality. A core focus is to invest in high growth opportunities to maximize returns for shareholders, at the same time also providing a comprehensive service offering to cover all business needs. From small startups to larger companies, Kaban offers the entire spectrum of service offerings required to get business moving. Visit www.kaban.co.za for more information. Kaban Investments, turning entrepreneurs' dreams into reality. You're listening to RTLSA. Be on lockdown with Noel Johnson. You are listening to. You listening to. You're listening to. You're listening to Noel Johnson. Noel Johnson. Noel Johnson. And you're listening to Noel Johnson. And you're gonna party it up listening to Noel Johnson. As I was saying, you're listening to my mate, Noel Johnson.